church is one foundation. You can begin giving that next week and then through 
out. Some have already started contributing. Um, Wednesdays, this is one of how I had this in moment. We we've had our we had our second or third prayer team meeting, something like that. Third, yes. Yeah, so we were had a third prayer meeting, prayer ministry team meeting. We meeting here, then we met in the choir room, then we came back in here. Well, this seems to be our home of doing it now. We're, we're having aids. Uh, there's at least ten signed up because of COVID situations. Are not coming, but they will come. I think, Ms. Marie, you want to participate still when, when that time is right? Yes, so, so that you can come and join us. So, when, when I say that, that you're being prayed for and your prayer needs are being prayed over, uh, they are. Uh, and when, you know, when the Lord says to us in His Word, pray, praying through tears, uh, these, these, the people on the prayer ministry team are literally tears coming down their faces as they pray for you, as they pray for vertigo, as they pray for a return to church, as they pray for those that are going to surgeries and coming out, those with cancer. So these are not, our, our prayer time as a prayer team is not, oh, how y'all doing? Okay, like, oh, yeah. Do you bring your peanut butter jelly sandwich? Sure. It's, we are serious. Huh? Yes. Yes, very serious. Um, so, no. We say that we are praying for you. It is not flippant. It's very, very, very serious and important. Continuing reflection from the Sermon on the Mount on Wednesdays. You can see that on IBCHammond.org, YouTube, or Facebook. Then the daily devotions, Monday through Friday, that I'm giving everyone. Let me see anything else. Uh, I received a text during a small group. Um, Lonnie Wasson. Uh, for those that do not know Lonnie Watson, he used to be the pastor here, and he served as our director of missions uh, for North Shore. He, he has suffered a, a severe heart attack this morning. I don't know any details. I don't know anything other than that, so we just remember him in prayer. And then I jotted down a few names that we need to kind of to, to remember. Uh, Marie Martin was first on my list, but she's here. So I need to uh, Ms. Dale, there you are. He and they offered. We still want to think about them. They're joining us through through the uh, videos. Robin Brady Christian and their family. Shirley and James. Miss Ella Zine. Gail Duncan. Brooke Mitchell. No, no, Brooke. Juan usually sits up here close to the front with the room. Still awaiting a kidney transplant, a donor. And then Rodney and Jeffrey Taylor. So those are just some that haven't been back with us in person, but they have been, I'm sure, online. So we just want to remember those. Now, let's have a time of prayer this morning, and Kim is going to continue in the praise team, leading us in worship. So leave you with Mill we'll, we'll Train for Miss Carol Monday, Wednesday, Friday, next week. Let me know. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for our time together. <clears throat> we thank you for the truth, the theology, the doctrine that we heard in that hymn that we sang, the words of church is one foundation, Father. Jesus Christ, our Lord, He is our foundation, the very cornerstone of our faith. We thank You, Father, for that, for that truth that we're able to voice and worship You through. Father, we just pray You continue to guide us this morning, control our thinking, bring our focus in uh, on You, on Your Word. Speak to our hearts, fresh and anew this morning. In Jesus' name we pray together. Amen. Let's stand as we continue in worship.
thank you so much for sending Jesus. Thank you so much that he is our foundation. Lord, we are your church, and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And then we Lord, we come to you 
you this morning with open minds and open hearts ready to receive your word. Teach us. Challenge us. Break us down and remake us. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Very simple prayer. Now some of you may be thinking as I was thinking, I the word just, just popped in my head. Purposive. Is that a word? It's a word. Listen. Okay, Google. Define purposive. Here's the definition of purposive. Having, serving, or done with a purpose. So don't tell me that's not a word. Kim and I had a little argument in the car. When was it? It was a discussion. It was a it was a it was a Holy Spirit guided discussion. <laughs> it's not purposive. It's purposive. purposive. So I said, "Okay, Google, that's not purposive. Purposive." He said, "Purposive. It's a word. Purposive."
together with all his holy people throughout Achaia, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So, in our theme verses, this was Paul speaking about himself and Timothy, God's partners. Go back to verse 1, said, God's partners. Who were they speaking to? They're speaking to the Christians, to the church in Corinth, all throughout Achaia. Paul and Timothy continue, as those partners, they continue, we beg you to accept this marvelous gift of God's kindness and then ignore it. Don't accept it and then ignore it. Or, <laughs> now we must ask the question, what was the marvelous gift? Well, in this case, we only need to go to the last part of chapter 5 in 2 Corinthians. So look there with me. Our theme verse is in chapter 6. So to, so to find the more direct context of what this marvelous gift is or was, we go now to chapter 5. And we look at verses 16 through 21. So, from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Here it really starts. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do not do so any longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new has come, the old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Verse 21, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So now, as we read the text together, as I read it, you followed along. What marvelous gift. What marvelous gift was Paul and Timothy encouraging the people to not ignore? What was the gift? Reconciliation. Yes. The gift, the ministry of reconciliation. Let that set just a minute. The ministry, the gift of reconciliation. What Paul and Timothy were saying to the church in Corinth was don't accept God's gift. Don't accept the ministry of reconciliation and then ignore it. Don't accept the position as ambassadors. Don't accept the position as ministry partners for the kingdom of God. Then ignore it. So is this to us as 21st century Christians. Yes. It's applicable. Have you, have I received the gift, the ministry of reconciliation which equals salvation? Have we received that? Yes, we have. So, the Holy Spirit through 2 Corinthians 6, 1 then says to us don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. As partners in God's kingdom, His work, as ambassadors, as ministers of reconciliation for Christ, what is our purpose? Well, you said it over there, I'm so tired of hearing it. Well, you're going to hear it until I'm not here anymore. What is our purpose? Well, I'd like for you to voice these, please. We've gone over it enough, haven't we? We've been doing another purpose. Well, then tell me what it is. Okay, let's see. What is the Great Commission in a nutshell? Go make. Go make disciples. Okay. What are the two New Testament most important commands? What are those? Love God. 
form. Be the church. Be love. And all of that equals be multiplied. Do you see how the Great Commission, the two New Testament commands, and the Romans do you see how they work together? So what is our purpose? Great Commission, love God, love people through the paradigm of Romans 12. Be transformed in the church, be loved, be multiplied. Our purpose, go make disciples. Love God, love people, be transformed. Be the church, be loved. Be multiplied. These never change. How many years have you been in church? A lot. Well, a lot. I'm just going to really ask that. I've only been here a month. Forever. I was in the church in my mother's womb. The Great Commission never changes. The two New Testament commands that we talk about, love God, love people, that never changes. The Romans 12 paradigm, the word may change, the verbiage may change, but that never changes. So when, when do we fulfill that purpose? Well, here's the catch. We never fulfill our purpose. Never. Our purpose will never be complete. But the way that we function through our purpose do change. Ways change. Purpose? No, it never changes. Ways to accomplish, to work through, change. Priorities shift. Resources shift. We shift. Here. Now. Well, when is a church that we work our purpose? Go to verse 2, God said. For God says, at just the right time, I heard you on the day of salvation. I help you. Indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. So, church, when? At the right time? Now. Today, how? How do we work out our purpose? Well, you've heard it some ways already since I've been here, but this is a new way to think through it. The series that we're about to jump into, this serving as an introductory, next Sunday really beginning and hitting it hard. Through the series, we're going to be answering this question, how as a church do we work out our purpose through four simple and straightforward ways. How as a church do we work out our purpose? We work out our purpose. Now really, write these down because we're going to... I'm telling you, it's going to be easy. God's going to use these very simple things powerfully in our lives. I know that already. How as a church do we work out our purpose? We work out our purpose through brokenness, through boldness, through conversation, through fellowship. Those are our four topics for our next four Sundays. How do we work out our purpose? Through brokenness, boldness, Conversation and fellowship. Well, as the praise team comes, Kim, the praise team's going to come, except for Jane. Um. <laughs> You're in trouble.
then ignore it. For God says at just the right time I heard you on the day of salvation, I help you. Indeed, the right time is now. Today is a day of salvation. I beg you not to accept the marvelous gift and then ignore it. So before we sing our song of reflection, I want to lead us in prayer. Um, you may remain seated for this, but I would like to ask the prayer team if they would come and spread out at the altar. I sent you all a text yesterday if you want to do this for me. Just those on the prayer ministry team can come and spread out at the altar. And they're going to, to pray with me for us, and then all of you want to pray together as I lead us in prayer. You can just sit at the altar. That would be fine, but you will be there just a little bit. I'll help you up. <laughs> Let's pray. Now, when I'm leading you in this prayer, you're praying it in your heart. You're joining me. When we say amen, that means that you agree with what we pray.
So far. 